Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BB3D channel we're going to find out how to use an ultrasonic sensor with an UNO R3 board. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling and other 3D printing and electronic stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. This is the eighth episode in the Getting Started with Electronics series in which we're using the Elegoo Super Starter Kit for UNO. This is an inexpensive kit featuring Elegoo's version of the Arduino UNO microcontroller board. The kit includes the UNO board, a breadboard for building the circuits, and a huge assortment of sensors, electronic components, and connecting wires. Check the description for a link to the kit if you're interested in it. Today, we're going to see how to use an ultrasonic sensor module with the Arduino, or in our case, Elegoo, Uno R3 board. To help keep things organized for each project, if you have a 3D printer or you know someone who does, you can download and print this project organizer that I designed. It's free to download, and there's a link in the description for that too. It holds the Uno and the breadboard, and has a tray in the front to keep all the components for your project from escaping. Last time we learned how to control a servo using some code we wrote and loaded on the UNO. As part of that, we used a code library included with the Arduino IDE, which made the task of controlling the servo ridiculously easy. Honestly, I was shocked at how easy it was. This time we're going to write code to make use of the ultrasonic sensor module, and like last time, we're going to make use of a code library to do it. The ultrasonic sensor works by using the principle of sonar. Now, it's an acronym for sound, navigation, and ranging. That's the ping sound that you always hear in movies associated with submarines because that's how submarines navigate underwater. Another term for this is echolocation, which is how bats and dolphins navigate their environments, avoid obstacles, and locate prey. It works by sending out sound pulses and listening for the echoes of those pulses to be reflected off of an object. By calculating the time between when the pulse was sent and when it was received back, the distance to an object can be determined. This sensor uses audio frequencies far above what we humans can hear, so that's why the term ultrasonic is used. And here is the sensor module. It has these two shiny metal cylinders on the face of it, and it does kind of look like a face, doesn't it? One is a speaker and one is a microphone. This module is capable of measuring distances between 2 centimeters and 400 centimeters, with an accuracy of up to 3 millimeters. When triggered, it sends out 8 40 kilohertz sound pulses and listens for them to be reflected. Then it sets its output to a high state for a period of time, and the amount of time that the output is held high is proportional to the time that it took for the module to hear its echo. So by triggering the module and then closely watching how long its output is in a high state, the code library can determine how far away an object is. Well, what do you say we get this thing wired up, and then we can work on the code? Here's what we're going to need for the project. We need the UNO board and the ultrasonic sensor module. And we also need four of the connector wires, and we need the kind that has a pin on one end and a socket on the other. I've got a red one for power, I've got a black one for ground, I've got a blue one for the trigger, and I've got a green one for the echo. I'm using the longest ones that I can find in the kit because I want to be able to move this around and point it at different things. Let's go ahead and connect the socket sides of these wires to the module. The red one goes to the pin marked VCC. The blue one goes to the pin marked TRIG. The green one goes to the pin marked ECHO. And the black one goes to the pin marked GROUND. Then on the UNO, connect the red wire to the 5 volt pin, the black wire to a GROUND pin, the blue wire to the D12 pin, and the green wire to the D11 pin. And that's it for the wiring. I like these simple ones. Well, now that we've got that done, let's turn our attention to the computer and we'll get into the Arduino IDE. We'll make sure that we have the needed code library installed, we'll write some code, and we'll be able to watch the serial monitor window in the IDE to see how far away something is from the ultrasonic sensor. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and I've got a new sketch open. If the IDE didn't automatically create a new sketch for you, click the File menu, then click New Sketch, and you'll be ready to go. The first thing that I want to do is save the sketch. I'll call it something simple like Ultrasonic. 
Then we need to install the code library for the sensor module, and here's how to do that. Click the sketch menu, then point to include library, and finally click add zip library. Now long ago, at the beginning of this series, we downloaded Elegoo's software for this kit, and inside that bundle there were folders for several languages. So inside Elegoo's folder, I have navigated to the English folder, and then into the libraries folder. Inside, I'll select the hc-sr04 zip file and click the Choose button. And with that, the library for this ultrasonic sensor is now installed. And that was pretty simple, and the code to use it is extremely simple as well. The first thing that we'll need to do in the sketch to be able to use the code library is to tell the Arduino IDE that we want to include the library's features in our code. And to do that, we'll use the include compiler directive. A compiler directive is an instruction to the Arduino IDE's code compiler rather than an instruction that's intended to be run on the UNO. And it's one of the few lines of code in an Arduino sketch which doesn't end with a semicolon. So it looks like this, pound include space quote sr04.h close quote. And then we'll press return a couple of times. Next, we need to declare a couple of integer variables so that we can more easily refer to the pins that we've got the sensor plugged into. Now, we're using these only once and only within this part of the code, which runs before the setup and the loop functions. So, technically, we could skip this and just type the pin numbers in directly when we're creating an instance of the sensors class from its code library. But, when we're looking at our code later on, we may have no idea which pin is the trigger pin and which pin is the echo pin, or even what the numbers mean at all. It's best to avoid these kinds of magic numbers in your code. It doesn't really cost you anything extra for the clarity of defining the trigger pin and the echo pin. So type int space trig underscore pin space equals space 12 semicolon and press return. Then type int space echo underscore pin space equals space 11 semicolon and press return. Now we need to get an object in code which represents the sensor. So type sr04 space sensor space equals space sr04 open parenthesis echo underscore pin comma trig underscore pin close parenthesis semicolon and press return. And we need a variable for our distance measurements. So type long space distance then a semicolon and press return. Now let's get into the setup function. This part only runs once as our program is beginning. In here, we're going to open up serial communications so that in the loop function, we can send our measurements back to the Arduino IDE's serial monitor. That way, we can see our distance measurements. So here in setup, type serial.begin, open parenthesis, 9600, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. Then type delay, open parenthesis 1000, close parenthesis, and a semicolon. Now all that's left is to add some code to the loop function. This is the code that gets run over and over again until we power off the UNO. So in here, we're going to take a measurement from the sensor and print the result to the serial monitor. We'll pause for a second after that, and then we'll just keep doing that over and over again. And here's how to make that happen. First, we'll take our distance measurement. Type distance equals sensor dot distance, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. Note the capital D in sensor dot distance. It's important. Next, we'll write this value out to the serial monitor by typing serial dot println, open parenthesis, distance, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. Finally, we'll delay for a second before doing it all over again. Type delay, open parenthesis 1000, close parenthesis, semicolon. And that's it. The code's done. Click the check mark button to make sure that everything's good with the code. Fix any errors that may have shown up. The most common errors are either spelling or capitalization errors, or forgetting a semicolon at the end of a line. Once your code checks out with no errors, let's plug the UNO into a USB port on the computer. Then click the Tools menu. Make sure board is set to Arduino Uno or Arduino slash Genuino Uno, and if it's not set, set it. 
Also on the Tools menu, make sure that Port is set to the one that's marked with the Arduino Uno or Arduino slash Genuino Uno tag. With that done, click the Upload button in your sketch window. And in a few seconds, the sketch will be loaded onto the Uno. As it runs, it's sending its measurement data out once per second, and each time it does, one of the LEDs on its board will blink. If you want to see what it's saying, click the Tools menu, then click Serial Monitor. Once every second, a number will be printed to that window, and that is the distance in centimeters to whatever object is reflecting the sensor's sound back to it. If you bring something closer and closer to it, you'll see that value decrease. And as you move whatever the something is farther away, you'll see that value increase. Hooray, it's working! So nar, so good! Oh, and here's a fun thing. Close the Serial Monitor window, then click Tools, and click Serial Plotter. In the Serial Plotter window, you'll get to see the distances graphed over time, which is pretty cool. Down at the bottom right corner of it, if there's a pop-up menu that says No Line Ending, set it to New Line. In older versions, the pop-up menu lets you choose different serial transmission rates. In newer versions, you'll see the line ending pop up. I'm on an older version right now, so we're seeing that transmission rate. On the graph, as the distance to an object gets smaller, the line moves down. And as it increases, the line moves up. One weird thing that I've noticed with this, though, is that sometimes that sensor returns a ridiculously large value in the range of like 2200 centimeters. I haven't figured that one out yet. If that happens to you, you'll see a huge spike on the graph, but you can clear the graph by closing the Serial Plotter window and reopening it, and if necessary, setting the menu at the bottom back to New Line. It might be fun to expand on this project by using green, yellow, and red LEDs to indicate whether the distance between the sensor and an object is within a certain range. And that should be simple enough to wire up, and you can use if-then statements to turn the LEDs on or off. That way you wouldn't have to depend on having a USB over serial connection, to get the range information. Ooh, what about using the range information to control a servo? Install it on a ball cap, and the arm on the servo could raise up a small sign that says back off if the distance to an object is less than about 180 centimeters. That's about six feet. Yes, you could make a ball cap that helps enforce social distancing. But what other ways can you think of to use this little ultrasonic sensor? Maybe a small wheeled robot that avoids obstacles in its path? There's probably a bunch of different things you could do, so if you come up with a good one, let me know in the comments. Okay, 3D printing and electronics friends, that's about all the time we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go make something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. And whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in this video, or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. If you liked this video, a thumbs up would be great, and check out these other videos as well. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.